Hello everyone, you've just met Laura. My name is Anna Malliston. Uh, we both work for Toronto Public Library and we're so excited that you could join us today for this workshop on resources for media literacy and online safety. Uh, today we'll be talking with you about how Toronto Public Library supports media literacy and online safety, highlighting some of the practical resources that educators and agencies working with children and families can use to help children and teens thrive online. And as part of this workshop, we'll first establish some key definitions, then demo a couple of resources that we've found helpful in our experiences. And of course, we'll have time for your questions at the end. But first, a little bit about who we are. Laura, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, um, my name is Laura Freeman, and I am currently the Senior Services Specialist of Adult Literacy for Toronto Public Library. Um, I recently transitioned into that role after for the last seven years working in our youth services department, very much focusing on these topics, working with high school students. Great. And as I mentioned, I'm Anna Malispin, and I'm a Senior Services Specialist in the Children's Services Department. As part of my portfolio, I am the lead for the Media Literacy and Online Safety for Children workgroup and help to develop programs and staff training and resources dealing with both media literacy and digital literacy issues, some of which we'll be going over in a little while today. So. This brings us to our Toronto Public Library and how it's, we work to support families and educators with media literacy. So as part of our 2020 to 2024 strategic plan, TVL has established digital inclusion and literacy as a strategic priority. A key component of this is to help Torontonians build the skills that they need to thrive in a digital world. This not, not only includes our youngest patrons and their families, but also building our capacity and skills as TPL staff. In addition to, oops, sorry, um, in addition to our strategic priorities, everything we do in children's services in TPL is informed by the vision and mission of children's services, which you can see here supporting the development of happy, confident, and successful kids by providing uh, solid foundations to support them and their families is a big undertaking. And by building our knowledge of media literacy skills and digital literacy issues, TPL staff will have the capacity to recommend resources to children and caregivers and educators and deliver services that support families in raising children who are, can successfully participate in digital media in wise, safe, and ethical ways. The Children's Services Vision and Mission guides services for children and families as they transition from early childhood to the teenage years. The Youth Services Vision and Mission outlines priorities for supporting youth as they transition into adulthood, including growth through learning. And this is something I want to touch on here. We are not experts on media literacy and online safety. The landscape of media literacy and digital literacy skills is constantly changing. This requires just a mindset towards continuous development, which is why we're all here attending this workshop. And what Laura and I are going to be sharing with you today are the resources we found helpful and hope that they will also help you. This is why it's so important to define media literacy and online safety. As you can see in this quote from Media Smarts, media literacy isn't just about being able to use media safely. It's about analysis. It's about being able to infer meaning in what is said and not said. And it's about being able to produce media too. We all know that nowadays there's no shortage of apps and platforms of all kinds of media. And so it's so important to develop this understanding. It's also important to understand the impact or the, the importance of online safety. So here's a quote from, the national, uh, from National Online Safety. In simple terms, online safety refers to the act of staying safe online. Being safe online means individuals are protecting themselves and others from online harms and risks, which may jeopardize their personal information, lead to unsafe communications, or even affect their mental health and well-being. In 2020, we have experienced a fundamental shift in the way that we live our lives. As more education, work, and social activities are done using digital media than ever before, the need for media literacy, digital literacy, and online safety skills has increased. The amount of information, social media posts, news clips and articles and videos and all kinds of media bombarding us has been overwhelming, and the information shared is far from unbiased. So what is TPL doing to support families and what can you do to support the families you serve? 
Well, TPRL supports uh, students through school outreach, such as uh, elementary school outreach or high school outreach. High school outreach, like outreach librarians like Laura was in her previous role, in particular, have a lot of experience delivering presentations that teach youth to evaluate credible resources and how to spot fake news. In children's services, we have delivered a workshop called Helping Kids Thrive Online as part of our Raising Confident Kids Parents workshops. You can still access the replay of this workshop through our TPL Kids Crowdcast channel if you're interested. Between children's services and youth services, there have been countless blog posts and website content developed to support families. And I'll be showing one of, the, one of those in a few slides. Youth Services has developed digital literacy skills workshops for youth 13 plus, and of course we have our digital innovation hubs that offer workshops on how to use different platforms and apps, and as we heard earlier, creation of media and is part a big part of media literacy. Lastly, we are working on building staff capacity and comfort with media literacy and promoting resources on online safety. Children's Services has created an introductory staff training module on the importance of media literacy and digital literacy skills, and there are subsequent model, modules in the work, in addition to training created by external presenters. So now that we have an understanding of what TPL is doing to support media literacy and online safety, in the coming slides, Laura and I will take you through some of the resources that we found helpful in developing media literacy skills in both children and teens. So first off is CBC Kids News, which is a daily news service for kids in Canada. It's real news written for and with kids. The information is well researched, balanced and backed by facts. And CBC Kids News follows the journalistic standards and practices set by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen here for a moment and I'm going to switch over to sharing a browser. We'll be doing a lot of that today, so I apologize for the constant uh, switching. Can everyone still hear me all right? Um, yes. yes, we can hear you. Perfect, yes. perfect. Okay, I'm hearing a little squeak from my headphones, so I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> so here we have CBC Kids News. The focus is on topics kids care about, and they're always trying to find ways to improve how they reflect the opinions of Canadian kids. The reason this resource is on the list is because it's also a safe place for kids as they don't link to external sites or social media unless they ensure the link is safe for kids. Topics you can see here include headlines and news and pop culture, uh, some sports, some science and technology. Sometimes. Anna, yes. sorry, Anna, yeah. um, you're not sharing the browser. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. Here we go. Oh, I see what I did there. There we go. Yeah. Oh, Perfect. No, it's still showing the PowerPoint, is it not? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. One moment. Here, everyone can see the browser now. Can you see the browser? I can't. Yes. See oh, okay. Yes, Perfect. Perfect. Great. So, as you can see here, we have. Um, lots of great uh, timely articles. So we've got some pop culture articles, some um, some timely events, as well as uh, so like so like Pride Month. We've got this in case you missed it so social post. And it does link to other fun things that kids might find interesting. I want to take you into this article this morning. So it can, this resource, CBC Kids, it's not meant to be like the only resource that kids are, meant, are going to be using for research. The target audience is for ages eight, maybe and nine, 10 to 12. So it's, it is for tweens, but it prides itself on not shying away from topics that um, kids are talking about, which is why this is just, you know, a great avenue to start conversations. And so with this article here, you can see that it does talk about like, here's what you need to know. It does mimic some of the other conventional news sites. It includes some timely quotes, as well as um, some nice high level intersection of things that adults might see in news, but just at a, at a kid's level. So it's a great way to teach kids to seek out information about the world from sources other than YouTube and Instagram and Twitter or TikTok. But really, it's just a, a good way to start those conversations, both in an educational setting and as a, as a family. 
And I just want to point out that this site does use cookies. Uh, it encourage and it does encourage a weekly newsletter or subscription to a weekly newsletter, but it also really promotes parental engagement and has no ads. So that's why uh, we think it's a good good source to keep in mind and to really teach kids about the importance of of looking to other sources beyond social media for information. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and go back to sharing our. Oh, Laura, did you want to go straight into control F or should I go back to the PowerPoint? You can go back to the PowerPoint for a okay. second and then, and then I'll load this in. So the next um, resource we're going to look at, still under the media literacy uh, resources, is one more geared towards teens. And as Anna gets the slide up, you'll be able to see that it is called control F. Um, and so it's a project of civics, the people behind the student vote parallel election program. It's a Canadian organization, and its goal is to help teens navigate the digital information world. Uh, being informed, including knowing how to sort through all the info that comes to us from a wide range of sources is very important. And so we wanna be able to weed out low quality and unreliable information and focus on what is trustworthy so that we know that our opinions and actions are based on the best information available. And that's really the goal of Control F. So it is designed to help us build better habits by learning and practicing simple digital literacy techniques. So I'm just gonna um, ask Anna to stop sharing so I can share Control F um, and we'll explore it a little bit together. So hopefully everyone can see that. Yes, I'm just gonna assume unless I hear otherwise. Yes, um, so this is the main website you get to and you can see it's available in French or English and you can see the tagline is find the facts and it uses the control F control find function that's fairly um, popular on the keyboard in, and the F in this case stands for facts. So this is what the website looks like. Um, it was brought about by the pandemic and really is about dealing with the infodemic that is associated with it, although it's not limited to just focusing on pandemic resources. At the top um, in the banner, you can see that there is three main steps to their verification process, source, claim, and trace. So they aim to teach these very simple and easy um, verification skills and hope that teens and high school students will be able to work it into their information seeking habits. Um, they're taught through very simple videos, which I'll show you how to access, and then follow up um, skill building as well. So right on the main page, you can see it talks about find the facts, why it's necessary in this time period, and then we meet our verification guides. So there's two uh, stars of the videos. Jane Leventko, who's a disinformation reporter from BuzzFeed, kind of does um, the overview work and really talks about what it's like to be a journalist in this era of misinformation. And then Michael Caulfield, who is a digital literacy expert, expert and university professor kind of takes the students on deep dives into the three skills, source, trace, and, and claim. So you can start with the first skill right from this main page, um, and they'll walk you through some videos explaining it and lead you to a fun fake out quiz at the end. Or you can go right into one of the techniques. So I've gone into source, which stands for investigate the source, and it walks us through why this is important and two specific skills that Mike goes over for students. Then it gives you the opportunity to test them on the spot or do the final fake out quiz at the end. The other important aspect to this website is the teacher tools section, which might come in really handy for a lot of us working with students. Um, under teachers tools, it takes us directly to back to that civics website. And remember I said that Control F is a sister site to the broader um, civics program, civics spelt like that. And so you'll find the link into the Control X, Control F curriculum first, as well as the additional lessons, videos, activities, and case studies that you can explore. So I'm just going to go into the lessons portal to show you you can choose secondary or elementary, which is great. And if we scroll further down underneath Control F, is the information literacy modules. So there's four of them, um, four for secondary level and elementary level that you can explore and work into your time um, and expertise with students. Okay, so that's a quick demo of Control F. And again, I started at the Control F website and it led me directly back to the civics website by clicking on 
teacher tools. Okay. So um, we, I'm going to stop sharing so Anna can reshare our slides. And we're going to move um, from our media literacy resources into our online safety um, and digital privacy focused resources now. Okay. So actually, I'm going to just quickly go straight into that website. Like, one moment. I, I warned you all, we're going to be sharing uh, a lot of our screens here. All right. So our next resource is um, the TPL's Internet Online Safety Quiz, and this is available through our TPL Kids website. Uh, the TPL Kids website is kids.tpl.ca. The quiz can be found under Fun Stuff, and it's under Quizzes. And this is the Internet Safety Quiz here. So I'm just going to show you what that will look like. Oops. Quizzes, and you just scroll to the bottom and there's the internet safety quiz. So this quiz presents uh, kids and families with real life situations such as what to do if you encounter people you don't know the game and they're requesting personal details like your birth date and how to help a grandparent create a safe password or how to adjust privacy settings on social media accounts. This quiz was inspired by the work of our Media Literacy and Online Safety Workgroup, and it was launched in October 2020 in conjunction with this blog post that you see here. So if you were to find the blog post, you would go to our blog section. I'm just going to open it with a new tab so I don't lose it. In our blog section, and you would just go back to the October 2020 listing, and you'll see it right here. How much do you know about online internet safety? Sorry. So this blog post does a great job. It presents some great uh, internet safety tips for kids and families and also connects them to some some resources that they can read up on the topic and of course it was launched in conjunction with this internet safety quiz so the quiz was inspired by that work of the um, media literacy and online safety work group as i said and while it allows kids to choose from a variety of different situations so let's do a little bit of a role play here laura if you could tell me what people say in the chat i'm going to pick this question here your aunt just joined Facebook. She shows you her profile and you notice a big problem with the privacy setting. Which setting allows strangers to see her posts? Is it only me, specific friends, friends, or public? Can anyone choose one? So we have a response for public. Okay. So we had a as the on. correct answer. All right, let's choose that. Two votes for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is which allows strangers to see your post is public. See answer. The correct answer is public. So when a post is public, anyone on and off Facebook can see it. This allows everyone to see your picture and videos, even strangers. So as you can see, it's it's providing the correct answer. And then over here, you uh, underneath each of the um, answers that are provided, there's a little bit of a link to the internet safety tips. So this is a fun little activity. We encourage staff to use this in any class visits, but we also encourage you to use it in any um, group settings, such as your classroom or to share with families and caregivers, because it really is one of those great ways to, to launch conversations, to to treat, talk about, oh, why did you choose that topic? And, and really get down to the bottom of what are the assumptions that kids make when it comes to social media or their activities online, because there are a lot of assumptions that are part of, part of their activities. So I encourage you to explore this. The other resource that I want to show to you today is called Zoe and Molly Online. And you can see the link here and I'll switch back to the slides where you can capture them. And of course, we'll be sharing the slides afterwards. But uh, with Zoe and Molly Online, it's actually a three part resource, which is created for educators. And it was provide, created by the Canadian Center for Child Protection, Inc. This resource is great for families, but as I said, it's created for educators. And you can see this have this, this little teacher portal here. When we click into the teacher portal, you can see there are some website lesson instructions, there are safety lessons, and the resources are created for that grade three or grade four level. Um, as part of the resource package that you can download as in PDF, they've also created a PowerPoint presentation and they've even created smart board lessons. And the comic books that I'll show you momentarily are meant to be sort of that foundational resource. So the grade three lesson plan um, includes activities and talking points based on the situation set up in the first comic where Zoe and Molly encounter inappropriate adult content online. 
And in the grade four lesson plan, one of the characters encounters someone online who is manipulating them and trying to get them to share personal information. And it coincides with the second comic. So I'm going to switch back over to the comics. So just to oh, get yeah, comics. So there's the grade three comic and the grade four comic. So just a little bit about Zoe and Molly online. There are two girls who liked to play games online. I've shown you the teacher resource, but these two comics are intended as that foundational lesson, as I mentioned. The comics are now available as a video read along. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the actual comic. Um, and you can download it as a PDF or you can read it online. So you can see here, um, it's got some nice graphics. It's got a little bit about what the comic is intended for and some of the outcomes of part of the lesson. And so in this one, it's talking about this game called House Pets that the kids like to play. And someone on that video, as the kids are searching a little bit more about House Pets, they accidentally access a resource that you know, maybe wasn't so appropriate for them. So this is what the comic would look like. And I'm just going to quickly show you the video uh, read along because this could be a great resource for e-learning or for reluctant readers. And so I'm just gonna skip past this part to give you a quick little tidbit. As you can see, it highlights the words as they're being read out loud. You can't hear the audio right now through, through Zoom, but if you were clicking on it at your own computer, you would hear them talking, you would hear some of the little animal sound effects. And so it's really, a, as I said, a great resource for reluctant readers or for e-learning. And it's the exact same thing as the content, it's just present as the comics, it's just presented in a, a little bit more of a familiar or engaging way for kids. And so that's what the comics are for Zoe Online. Now I wanna take you into the game and the game's just gonna take a quick moment to load. I'm just gonna mute that um, so it's not bombarding me with sound. So the game moves at a gentle pace, but does a great job of weaving an undersea narrative around situations kids may face online, like what to do if someone requests pictures or you receive a notification about a virus being detected on your computer. It's a choose your own adventure style game, but the game has a fair hook and does a good job of setting up consequences for actions. As I learned when I tested it out and ended up being eaten by a whale when I agreed to meet with someone offline. <laughs> so I'm just going to let this run for a couple of minutes. It's basically one of the characters, I forget if it's Zoe or Molly, they discover themselves in this under the sea world and uh, right away as they're exploring it, they, they encounter like an octopus character that's trying to prompt them to take pictures wearing something specific. And then so it's at, at every intersection point, they're faced with a decision and a consequence as I made. So it's a really good way to sort of reiterate um, the conversations and the lesson plans. So I won't let this play too much longer. It does have a little bit of a preamble. Um, and then the next resource that's part of Zoe and Molly online is this guess what quiz. So the guess what quiz reinforces the concepts learned in the comics through the game. It does a great job of highlighting some of the situations that can be a little bit tricky and aren't always so black and white. So is it okay to post pictures online? If you click false, it tells you to try again. And that's because the real answer is sometimes and that you really should always be checking with that safe adult. Because for example, if you're sharing a picture with a family member it's someone that you know and you know you've already had that established connection and communication and verify that that is who you think it is then it might be it would be safe to share a photo so it just does a really great job of highlighting the gray and of course we're always redirecting kids to talk to that trusted adult so that's the um, conversation around the internet safety quiz and Zoe and Molly online. These are both fantastic resources for you to test out and try in group settings. As I said, you can use them in the classroom or share them with the families that you serve as a way of really initiating those challenging conversations and really exploring some of those assumptions that we or that kids might make about their what they're doing online. So I will stop sharing my screen there. Fantastic, Anna. If you can just go back to the slides um, for the next resource um, around online safety. So the next one we're going to look at um, is the Office of the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, which sounds quite boring. And while it is a government site 
and can be somewhat dry and full of a lot of legislative <laughs> information. There is a section um, on it directly for helping kids and youth understand the importance of privacy online. There's both parent resources and teacher resources. Um, so it does contain a separate section with these resources, um, has tips for parents, research on the topic, etc. The teacher resources section has pre-done presentations, lesson plans you can explore and use, as well as activity sheets for younger children, um, videos you can watch, and a fun quiz, um, similar to the ones that Anna was showing, but for older students, teens mostly. Both the quiz and the privacy everyday document are great resources to get teens thinking about their daily online habits and just how much of their privacy they're giving away without realizing it often. Um, so we're not going to showcase that resource today, um, but we did want you to make you aware of it. And of course, these links would be available. So if we can go to the next slide. Now we're going to move into two core resources that Anne and I wanted to make you aware of. And the reason we put these at the end is because they cross over between both media literacy skill development as well as online safety um, and digital privacy issues. So it kind of, they're overarching resources. So the first one um, is Common Sense Media, as you can see on the screen. And so while this resource might be most recognizable as the place where parents can go for ratings on movies and such, um, and is geared towards parents, there is a whole uh, section of their website dedicated to educators. So it is an American site, um, so keep that in mind. The next one we show will be Canadian, um, but there are free learning activities and these are um, grouped together by grade and by subject, which can be really helpful. And they're free to use, right? They're under their heading wide open school section. And there's a whole section, for example, on digital citizenship, and it ranges all the way from kindergarten to grade 12. So the topics addressed um, are privacy and security, cyberbullying, media literacy, et cetera. So all the things that we're kind of um, trying to gather great online resources about. So it includes lessons, uh, lesson slides, videos, and customizable resources. So it's a great place to kind of explore and check out if you're looking for those type of resources. The next slide and our final one um, is Media Smarts. So hopefully you've heard of Media Smarts before. If not, um, we're really excited to introduce you to it. It is our last resource that we want to share with you, but it's definitely not last but least, right? It's it's one of the, the best um, Canadian organizations dedicated to digital and media literacy. Um, it includes supports for parents and teachers, and it also conducts research into these topics. So while some of the resources, we do want to put this right up front, some of the resources that are geared to teachers require a paid subscription, much of their content is freely available. And I'm going to explore the website with you now to kind of showcase how you can navigate around. Thanks, Anna. Okay. So I'm going to assume we can see this unless I get um, indicated otherwise. So this is the Media Smarts website. Um, you can see kind of front and center. This section always changes. Right now they're highlighting their most recent research that they've done on algorithmic awareness with um, teenagers in the Ottawa area. It's a really interesting read if, if you're interested in that topic. And then right below, if you keep scrolling, there's two sections. The, um, you can explore digital and media literacy topics or you can go right into finding teacher resources. So I'm gonna um, show you how we can find these resources that might be useful for you um, in your agencies and your work with children. So you have the option right away to select grade and or select topic. Um, and you can see if I open up the grade window, it goes all the way from kindergarten to grade 12. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna select a topic and then we'll go from there. So if I open the topic window option, you can see there are tons of options, everything from stereotyping um, to privacy to media literacy 101. So they do have a really um, diverse collection of digital issues and media literacy topics you can explore. We're just gonna go and choose cyberbullying. And so I've selected cyberbullying and all I have to do is select submit. And it's gonna bring up their resources um, on cyberbullying. So it's identifying that there are 23 teacher resources for me connected to cyberbullying. And in the center of the screen, those resources are presented, as you can see. And then along the side is where I can specify um, and kind of filter these results more fully if I wanted to. So a quick scan will tell us there's everything from a game, 
that can teach it, this educational game, which indicates it is a licensed resource. So look for that indicator um, and pay attention to the free ones instead. There's guides, um, classroom resources, another teacher guide, lesson plans, workshops, et cetera, um, as you go through. And all of them are tagged here with the topics that they cover. Um, so if you are looking in this case for cyberbullying, it's there, but this one also talks about representation, social, gender representation, social networking, et cetera. Then you have the ability on the side here to limit by grade if you wanted to at this point. So if you were looking for the elementary level or secondary, you could limit or by resource type. So if you were looking for a tip sheet to share with parents, you could click tip sheet and it's sharing, it gives me eight tip sheets related to the idea of cyberbullying. Or if you were looking for a lesson plan instead, right? You have the ability right here. Uh, it gives me 10 results that you can use and build off for your lesson plans, um, for your, your preparation to work with your students, okay? And you can combine other topics. So I could do cyberbullying and cybersecurity and gender representation, et cetera. And it would um, filter the results accordingly. So that's kind of how you navigate through the teacher resources section. Um, and that was again, right from that main page on the Media Smarts website. I'm gonna go back to the main page and just alert you to the banners at the top this time instead. So you can see there's home, digital and media literacy, research, and then the sections for parents and for teachers specifically. So if I hover over digital and media literacy, you can see it gives me those kind of main topics that they cover, right? Um, everything from general information topics to the media and digital issues specifically. And for all of these topics, they'll have frameworks and overviews, and it also will direct you oops, right away into any educational games or tutorials or workshops this way if you were interested. So if we clicked on educational games, for example, it would show you the resources. And again, it would indicate right away if it was licensed or not. So you're just gonna be being mindful for that and selecting the ones that are free for everyone to access, okay? Uh, research is a great portal if you, um, like I did when I first started working with this subject, need to kind of brush up on your skills and your understanding of these topics. They do wonderful research reports um, on a variety of these topics. Their most recent is on algorithmic awareness. Um, and these are just some of their research reports. And then of course, another entry point into the teacher resources. So on this side is the licensed resources. So you wanna, you will wanna be focusing oops, on this side, which will take us into that search functionality to limit and narrow teacher resources, as well as the big frameworks and 101 guides for their big topics. So that was a quick overview of the Media Smarts um, website. Lots to explore and kind of uncover based on um, the specific topic you're interested in working with your students around or um, any tip sheets, et cetera, you wanna provide and, and send to parents that um, you're working with, families you're working with. So I will stop sharing that and come back to this. And uh, Anna can um, choose to share our final slide if she wishes. It's really just our contact information. Um, and we're happy at this point to answer any questions you might have about the resources we shared. Um, again, the slides and links will be shared. Um, with all of you through Frontier College, but um, our emails are on this slide as well if you had further questions for us specifically.